morning cadets in episode one we discussed about the history of the philippine national police as well as the basic terminologies that are used in the study of police organization and administration in episode two we discussed about line functions staff functions and auxiliary functions of the philippine national police as well as the concepts and the theories underlying the practice of policy in this episode what we are going to do is to continue the discussion in the subject and we will be talking about the Philippine National Police powers and functions, rank, promotion, retirement, and attrition. To start with, let us first learn the powers and functions of the Philippine National Police. First is exercise the general powers to make arrest, search and seizure, in accordance with the Constitution and pertinent laws. Take note that even though the police officer has the power to make arrest or to execute arrest to anybody suspected of having committed a crime, take note that our Philippine Constitution is very strict in terms of following the rules and regulations that have to be observed. Arrest and search should only be made upon the virtue of a warrant. However, in criminal law, there are circumstances that are considered for a person to be to, for a person to be authorized or to be legally entitled to make arrest or seizure. We call this one as warrantless arrest and warrantless search. Second is Philippine National Police officers has the power to detain and arrest person for a period not beyond what is prescribed by law, informing the person so detained of all his or her rights under the Constitution. A police officer is mandated to recite or to explain the Miranda rights to a person who is subject to arrest. The Miranda rights include the right to remain silent, the right to be informed of the cause and nature of accusation, and the right to counsel. Next, issue licenses for the position of firearms and explosives in accordance with the law. If you can still remember, in episode 2, we discussed about the authority or the responsibility of CSG or the Civil Security Group. The Civil Security Group is one of the offices of the Philippine National Police, which is in charge in the issuance of permits, and licenses for watchmen and security guard or any security businesses as well as the giving of permits licenses for firearms position or, or firearms ownership so the philippine national police has the power to issue this kind of licenses related to the position of firearms and explosives in accordance with the law next is the Philippine National Police has the power to supervise and control the training and operation of security agencies and issue licenses to operate security agencies and to security guards and private detectives for the practice of their profession. So as I have said a while ago, it is the duty of the CSG or the Civil Security Group to issue licenses and permits related to security business related to security business as well as the CSG or the PNP CSG also has the power to supervise and control the training and operation of all security agencies. Next power and function is to perform such other duties and exercise all other functions as may be provided by law. One of these is the forestry law where the Philippine National Police is primary enforcer in coordination with the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Take note that we have five pillars of the criminal justice system. One is the law enforcement. Second is the prosecution. The third is court. The fourth is correction. And the last one is community. Philippine National Police belongs to the first pillar, the frontliner in the criminal justice system. So, as part of the law enforcement pillar, it is the task of the Philippine National Police to enforce or to, imp or to implement all existing laws as mandated for them to implement. 
So as part of the law enforcement pillar, the Philippine National Police is tasked to implement not just the city municipal ordinances, but they are also tasked to implement all pertinent national laws. In the old law, the Philippine National Police rank classification follows starting from PO1, PO2, PO3, is PO1 up to Director General. But since there was a call coming from the Senate to adopt the military rank classification, right now, in the approval of Republic Act 11200, the old rank classification of the Philippine National Police was changed into military classification. So right now, instead of saying PO1 or Police Officer 1, Police Officer 1 right now is named as Patrolman or Patrolwoman. In your screen, you can see PO2, PO2, PO2 in the old law right now, uh, adapting on the provisions of Republic Act 11200, we call them as Police Corporal. Next to Police Corporal is Police Staff Sergeant, which is comparable to PO3 in the old law. Next to Police Staff Sergeant is Police Master Sergeant, which is comparable to SPO1 in the old law. Next is Police Senior Master Sergeant, comparable to SPO2. Police Chief Master Sergeant, comparable to SPO3. Police Executive Master Sergeant, comparable to SPO4 or Senior Police Officer 4. Then, Police Inspector in the old law, right now we have the rank named as Police Lieutenant. Senior Inspector in the old law, right now we have the new name which is Police Captain. Next to Police Captain is Police Major comparable to Police Chief Inspector in the old law. Next is Police Lieutenant Colonel which is comparable to Police Superintendent in the old law. Next is Senior Superintendent. So right now we have the new name which is Police Colonel. And then at the higher level we have the Police Chief Superintendent in the old law, but the new name right now of the rank is Police Brigadier General. Next to Police Brigadier General is Police Major General, comparable to Police Director in the old law. Next to Police Major General is Police Lieutenant General, comparable to Deputy Director General in the old law, and the highest, which is the rank of the Chief of Police, is Police General. But in the old law, has the old rank named as Police Director General. Take note, the commission officers, the commission officers starts from Police Lieutenant up to Police General. On the other hand, the ranks starting from Patrolman or Patrolwoman up to Police Executive Master Sergeant belongs to what we call as non commission officers. You can actually easily identify the rank of a particular police officer by taking a look on the shoulder board. On the shoulder board of a police officer, especially for commission officers, you can find insignia. For non-commissioned officers, you can see the insignia at the sleeves of their uniform. Say for example, at the shoulder board, of a police general, you can find four stars. For police brigadier general, you can find one. For police major general, you can find two stars. Three stars for police lieutenant general. For police major, you can find one sampagita. On police lieutenant colonel, you can find two sampagita. And then for police colonel, you can find three. For police lieutenant, you can find one anahaw leaf. For police captain, you can find two anahaw leaves. These are the insignia that can be uh, these are the insignia that can be seen on the shoulder board of a commission officer. For non-commission officers, you can identify them through stripes. For example, at the sleeves of the uniform of a patrolman or patrolwoman, you can find one stripe. The more stripes are present on the sleeves of the uniform of a police officer, the higher would be the rank. For example, in patrolman or patrolwoman, you can only see one stripe. For police corporal, you can find two stripes. The number of stripes will be added 
as the police officer is promoted from one rank to the other. So if a particular person will apply in the Philippine National Police and the application follows a typical process, the first rank that the person will have is patrolman or patrolwoman. But take note, cadets of the Philippine National Police Academy or PNPA are classified above the executive master sergeant and below the police lieutenant rank in the Philippine National Police. Also, the Philippine National Police is considered as national in scope but civilian in character. National in scope simply means that the Philippine National Police is a nationwide government organization whose jurisdiction covers the entire breadth of the Philippine archipelago which extends up to the municipality of Calayan Islands in the province of Palawan. All Philippine National Police personnel, both the uniform and non-uniform components are national government employees. Civilian in character, on the other hand, means that the Philippine National Police is not part of the military. The military is under the armed forces of the Philippines. But take note, the armed forces of the Philippines is under the Department of National Defense, which is different on the case of the Philippine National Police. Because the Philippine National Police is not under the DND, but rather part or under the supervision of the Department of Interior and Local Government. In addition, civilian in character also emphasize that although it retains some military attributes such as discipline, it shall adopt unique non-military cultures, code of ethics, and standard of professional conduct comparable to the civilian forces of other countries. So hence, again, Philippine National Police is not part of a military agency. As I have said a while ago, Philippine National Police is not under the supervision of the Department of National Defense, but rather Philippine National Police is under the Department of Interior and Local Government. That's the reason why Philippine National Police adopts a dogma which is national in scope but civilian in character. Also, a Philippine National Police member as a law enforcer and an agent of a person in authority is a model citizen of the community. Take note of the words agent of a person in authority. Again, law enforcement agencies such as Philippine National Police, the employees therein are considered as agent of persons in authority. NBI agents are also considered as agent of person in authority. On the other hand, mayors or employees that were given positions by means of appointment or election such as mayors, governors, presidents, barangay officials, these are considered as persons in authority. Again, police officers are only agent of a person in authority. There is a mandate under our laws that Philippine National Police should be a model citizen of the community. A police officer is looked upon as the paragon of virtues and a protector of the people. He has chosen as a noble profession of high risk and dedicated service to protect the rights, lives, and properties of the people whom he had sworn to serve with utmost dedication. In this regard, each Philippine National Police member is mandated to strictly adhere to the police code of professional conduct and ethical standard. Swift punishments are rendered to erring members while proper recognition for exemplary achievements are given to deserving ones. Merit and performance qualifications and mandatory promotional courses are instituted for acceleration in the career ladder. Continuing education and leadership development aside from moral values enhancement are the keys to dynamic professional groups of Philippine National Police members. So, the same as other government employees, police officers are also mandated to follow the, the provisions of Republic Act 6713, which embodies the professionalism, the ethical standards, 
which a police officer should follow in the performance of his duties and functions. Now let us go now to the PNP Doctrine of Development. Police doctrine is a doctrine of preservation. Therefore, it is a truism that the basic weapon of a policeman is the excellent knowledge of the law he is enforcing and that the gun is only secondary or a defensive weapon. An ordinary policeman is expected to be a one-man staff. He can be considered as the operator, fiscalizer, and prosecutor in a court of law. On top of this, he is also expected to behave civilly as a model citizen of his community, a protector of human rights. Take note that the purpose why a police officer is having a firearm at his side is for him to have necessary protection in the performance of police duties. But the firearm handed to the police officer shall never be used to spread violence in the community. Because after all, police officers are considered as models or servants of the society. On the other hand, excellent knowledge of the law is very important. Because if a police officer, while in the line of duty, does not know the pertinent laws he is enforcing, the problem is there will be complications, there will be violation of human rights, and these violations may even result to may even result to either suspension or administrative cases that can be filed against the police officer. Again, the basic weapon of a policeman is not the firearm. It's not the M16. It's not the .45 caliber firearm. It's not the 9mm caliber firearm at the side of a policeman, but rather the most important weapon in the performance of the duties and functions of a police officer is the knowledge of the law. And the knowledge of the law is something that will, that will allow the police officer to be effective and efficient in the performance of his duties and functions. There are four cyclical police management processes. We start with planning. Next to planning is organizing. Next to organizing is leading. And the last one is controlling. Planning is the process of setting performance objectives and identifying the actions needed to accomplish. Organizing, on the other hand, is the process of dividing the work to be done and coordinating results to achieve a desired purpose. Leading is the process of directing and coordinating the work efforts of other people to help them accomplish an important task. Controlling, on the other hand, is the process of monitoring performance, comparing results to objectives, and taking corrective action as necessary. In episode 2, I made mention to you about rank designation and position title. But to reiterate, again, the Philippine National Police is headed by the Chief of the Philippine National Police. And the rank of the Chief of the Philippine National Police is Police General. Also in episode 2, I mentioned about the officer who is in second command in the Philippine National Police. Again, to repeat, the second in command of the Philippine National Police will have the rank of Police Lieutenant General and shall occupy the position as Deputy Chief for Administration. The third in command will have the rank of Police Lieutenant General and shall also occupy the position as Deputy Chief for Operations. On the other hand, the fourth in command will also have the rank of Police Lieutenant General and shall occupy the position as chief of the directorial staff of the Philippine National Police. But in episode 2, we did not discuss about the rank designations, we did not discuss about rank designations and position titles of police officers occupying management or supervisory, or supervisory positions in the provincial and regional levels. So let us discuss the, the rank designation again and position titles of those police officers in the lower level. The heads of the NCR or National Capital Region District Offices will have the rank of Police Brigadier General and shall have the position title as District Director. On the other hand, the head of provincial offices will have the rank of Police Colonel and shall be known as Provincial Director. So let us say, for example, the provincial office that we have right now 
inaganan, inaganan si Bulan is supervised or is headed by a police officer with the rank of police colonel. And the person who heads the provincial office shall be considered as the Philippine National Police Provincial Director. At the lower level, the heads of the district offices will have the rank of police lieutenant colonel and shall have the position title of district director. The heads of the municipality or city offices with the rank of police major shall be known as the chief of police. So meaning, if a particular person heads a, per, a certain municipal or city station, the rank should be police major. Now let us go now to appointing authority. The appointment for patrolman or patrolwoman up to the rank of police executive master sergeant shall be done by the Philippine National Police Regional Director for regional personnel. But for national headquarters personnel should be done or should be appointed by the chief of the Philippine National Police. These two must have the attestation of the Civil Service Commission. So if a person, let us say for example, will apply in the Philippine National Police in Cebu City or in the regional office in Cebu City in the rank of patrolman or patrolwoman, the, if the person will be accepted during the application, the person who is, or the officer who is in charge to appoint him to that rank is no other than the PNP Regional Director. But then again, as I have said, in the National Headquarter in the Luzon, the person who will appoint for patrolman up to Police Executive Master Sergeant rank is not the PNP Regional Director, but rather the Chief of the Philippine National Police. Next, for the rank of Police Lieutenant to Police Lieutenant Colonel, the person or the officer who is in charge to appoint those rank is no other than the Chief of the PNP, as recommended by their immediate superiors, attested, of course, by the Civil Service Commission. Next, for Police Colonel to Police Lieutenant General, these ranks are appointed by the President upon recommendation of the Chief of the Philippine National Police with proper endorsement by the Chairman of the Civil Service, with a proper endorsement by the Chairman of the Civil Service Commission and subject to confirmation by the Commission of Appointments. For Police General, which is the higher rank, such rank shall be appointed by the President from among the senior officers down to the rank of Police Brigadier General in the service, subject, of course, to confirmation by the Commission on Appointments. Provided, however, that the Chief of the Philippine National Police shall serve a tour of duty not to exceed four years. Take note of that. Again, the Chief of the Philippine National Police shall serve a tour of duty not to exceed four years. Provided further that in times of war or other national emergency declared by Congress, the President may extend such tour of duty. The usual manner of application is that when a person applies in the PNP, usually the rank that is applied is no other than patrolman or patrolwoman. But take note guys that there is actually a way or a method for a person to easily jump or easily obtain a higher rank. That rank usually is the commission, the lowest commission officer rank, which is police lieutenant. In general, all original appointments of commission officers in the Philippine National Police shall commence with the rank of police lieutenant. To include all those with highly technical qualifications, applying for the PNP technical services such as dentist, optometrist, nurses, engineers, and graduates of and graduates of forensic sciences. So if in case a dentist or an optometrist, for example, will apply in the Philippine National Police through lateral entry, meaning they will be taking a, a lateral entry examination. If they pass, they will undergo other processes or other examinations. And again, if they pass on those tests or examinations and they are accepted, what will happen is that instead of having the rank of patrolman or patrolman or patrolwoman, they will, uh, they will 
instantly jump or they will instantly get a higher rank which is police lieutenant. And police lieutenant is the rank, the starting rank of commission officers. On the other hand, doctors of medicine, members of the bar, and chaplains shall be appointed to the rank of police captain in their particular technical service. So when we say members of the bar, these are lawyers. Okay? So if lawyers will apply in the Philippine National Police through lateral entry and they pass their necessary examinations required for them to pass, what will happen is that they do not get the lowest rank, which is patrolman or patrolwoman, but rather they will jump directly to commission officership and that rank shall be police captain. Police captain is a higher rank compared to police lieutenant. Now the question is, what is the advantage of being a registered criminologist in terms of lateral entry in the Philippine National Police? Our new law that regulates the criminology profession, specifically Republic Act 11131 in Section 36, states that registered criminologists who are not in the government service shall be eligible and be given preference for appointment via lateral entry as police, fire, and jail inspectors or its equivalent in the PDA, NBI, and other law enforcement agencies. Provided further that those who are already in a police, fire, and jail service as non-commissioned officers and who are already registered and licensed criminologists shall be given preference for lateral entry. That's the newest regulation, that's the newest regulation or mandate coming from the Public Act 11131, specifically Section 36. Meaning, if a person is a registered criminologist, when I say registered criminologist, as what we already discussed in the introduction to criminology, these are individuals who already passed the criminology licensure examination and are registered in the PRC or the Professional Regulation Commission. And if these persons are considered as registered criminologists already, you will have the preference of appointment in terms of lateral entry. Okay? So meaning, even if you are not yet on the service, as long as you are a registered criminologist, even if you are not yet a police officer or a jail officer, the law provides that you will have a preference for appointment via lateral entry. But if you are, but if you are already employed as jail officer or police officer or fire officer, then that will give you a lot of luxury or a lot of privileges to take the lateral entry examination and I tell you, you will have again the preference of appointment via lateral entry. That is, what the late, that is the latest privilege of being a registered criminologist. The question right now is, what if a person graduates from criminology but does not pass the criminology board examination? Does he have the advantage or the preference of lateral entry? The answer is no. So because what is required in the Public Act 131 is for the person to take and to pass the criminology licensure examination and be registered in the, in the Professional Regulation Commission. If in case a person is only a graduate but not a passer, there is no preference, there is no privilege or the preference of appointment via lateral entry. The person must become again a registered criminologist before he will have the preference of appointment. Now let us go now to police promotion. What is police promotion? Promotion is a status change of a policeman amounting to dynamic elevation of qualified or deserving members as opportunities, of course, to assignment or duties of greater importance. All promotions should be based on merits and fitness. So basically, when we say promotion, this refers to the change of rank from a lower rank to a higher rank. For example, from patrolman to police corporal. So we call that one as promotion. If in case, what happens is at the opposite. Like let us say, because of some demerits, a person who has the rank of police corporal was been demoted to police patrolman. We call that one as demotion. Okay? 
All promotions shall be properly evaluated by the Philippine National Promotion Board unless exempted by the Police General. All promotions shall be based on promotional vacancies. Relative seniority standing shall be maintained. Take note, no retirable personnel within 12 months of the current promotion year shall be eligible for regular promotion. So meaning, those retirable individuals shall not be allowed to apply for regular promotion. There are three kinds of promotions. One is regular promotion. The second one is special promotion. And the third one is promotion by virtue of position. What I have stated a while ago is that those persons or those police officers who are considered as retirable within 12 months are not eligible for regular promotion only. I am talking about regular promotion. But there are instances that they can be qualified for special promotion. So we will be talking what is regular promotion, what is special promotion, and what is promotion by virtue of position. Let us start with regular promotion. Regular promotion is a quota allocated promotion wherein a candidate must satisfy all the mandatory requirements fixed for a certain grade. There are requirements that are considered as mandatory for a person to be qualified for regular promotion. First is time in grade, which refers to the total period of time a candidate has acquired in a certain grade regardless of his status of appointment therein. While seniority in rank is the total period acquired in certain grade in permanent status. Let us say for example, if there are two police officers occupying the rank of patrolman, the first officer um, has already the first officer occupies such rank for already five years, and the second officer occupies such rank for three years only. It is the first officer who has the higher years of occupation in that rank that will have the advantage or will have the seniority in rank. So meaning he will have the advantage for promotion compared to the second officer who only occupies such rank for three years only. Second requirement is that performance, which refers to the sum total of a candidate's past activities and achievements in a certain work. Take note, the person who will apply or the police officer who will apply for regular promotion must have a satisfactory rating. Because if the rating is, let us say, very poor or not satisfactory, that will disqualify him to apply for regular promotion. Next, potential. The overall gross worth and capability of a candidate to assume a higher position and greater responsibility based on tangible past performance. Training, acquisition or finishing prescribed courses for the rank or its equivalent courses. There, in, in, in other major subjects, um, specifically police, personnel and record management, you can, dis, you can learn there that there, is actual, there are actually prescribed courses or prescribed training required for a police officer to undertake before he will be qualified to apply on a specific rank. Next is eligibility appropriate for the rank. For those persons who are not passers of the criminology licensure examination, they will be required to take the NAPOLCOM promotional examination. But if a person or a police officer has eligibility, let us say for example, PRC license, whether that license a is is a license of a teacher, license of an agriculturist, or a criminology license. As long as you have the license issued by the PRC or the Professional Regulation Commission, you will be eligible for a specific rank. But take note, as but take note, for registered criminologists, you will be eligible for promotion up to police lieutenant colonel. The next kind of promotion is special promotion. So those persons who are uh, even considered as retirable, they cannot be qualified for regular promotion but may be qualified for special promotion if the following cases, cases are present. Let us say for example, if they have the, if they have the so-called PNP Medal of Valor. When you say PNP Medal of Valor, this is 
a medal that is only given to those officers who expose or who exhibit bravery or gallantry in the performance of his duty. Or these are acts of conspicuous courage and gallantry at the risk of life over and beyond the call of duty. So anyone or any police officer who exhibit courage and gallantry in the performance of the duty can be given with a medal of valor. And medal of valor can be a good basis for special promotion. Next, acts of outstanding leadership, ability, and efficiency in staff and supposed services over and above the normal requirements criteria for regular promotion. On the other hand, acts of highest sense of moral value and honesty in the performance of duty and factions. The last one is the promotion by virtue of position. Any PNP personnel designated to any key position whose rank is lower than that which is required for such position shall after six months of occupying the same be entitled to a rank adjustment corresponding to the position. That is very understandable. Provided that the personnel shall not be reassigned to a position calling for a higher rank until after two years from the date of such rank adjustment. Provided further that any personnel designated to the position who does not possess the established minimum qualifications therefore shall occupy the same temporarily for not more than six months without reappointment or extension. Let us say, for example, in the case of the previous um, police uh, chief, uh, which is now uh, a senator, uh, Senator Bato. So Senator Bato was then a provincial director in Davao. But since he was uh, appointed as a chief of police, uh, he was appointed by the president automatically from having the rank of police colonel, he was promoted up to the rank of police general because he was appointed as the chief of the Philippine National Police during that time. Now let us go now to police retirement. There are two types of retirements. One is compulsory retirement. The second one is optional retirement. Compulsory retirement will be given to officer and non-officer in the Philippine National Police when they attain the age of 56. So meaning, 56 years old, that is the required age, the compulsory age for a person to retire. So whether he like it or not, as, as long as he has that age, which is 56, he has to retire because that is what is mandated by the law. Optional retirement on the other hand, if the police officer has an accumulated number of years of service equivalent to 20 years of satisfactory active service, the person can apply for optional retirement, even if that individual does not uh, reach at the age of 56. As long as there is an accumulation equivalent to 20 years of satisfactory active service, the police officer can be qualified now for optional retirement. Take note guys that the salary or the regular comp monthly compensation of police officers, let us say for patrolman, for patrol woman, usually the salary would range from 30,000 to 37,000. That's for patrolman or patrol woman only. If a police officer retires from the service, the monthly retirement pay shall be 50% of the base pay and longevity pay of the retired grade in case of 20 years of active service, increasing by two and one half percent for every year of active service rendered beyond 20 years to a maximum of 90% for 36 years of active service and over. So meaning, if a person will retire from the service, granting that he has 36 years of active service and over, there will be a retirement benefit equivalent to 90% equivalent to from his base pay. And that is a very lucrative retirement benefit in the case of a retired police officer. An officer or non-officer who is permanently and totally disabled as a result of injuries suffered or sickness contracted in the performance of his duty shall be entitled to one year's salary and to lifetime pension equivalent to 80% of his last salary in addition to other benefits as provided under existing laws. Take note 
that the one-year salary and lifetime pension can only be applicable if the disability is in accordance or is related to the performance of the duty. Because if a police officer, while off duty, becomes drunk and while he drives from a particular place towards his residence and unfortunately meet an accident and died, that person will not be qualified for a lifetime pension simply because the passing, the death of the person or the death of the police officer is not related to the performance of his duty. Now let us go now to attrition system for uniform personnel. When we say attrition, it is defined in the dictionary as the removal or the reduction of employees because of death, retirement, and removal from office. The first type of attrition is attrition by attainment of maximum tenure in position. Under the law, specifically Republic Act 8551, the maximum tenure of Philippine National Police members holding key positions is hereby prescribed as follows. For the Chief PNP, the maximum tenure of position shall be four years. After, the, after that, they will be subjected to attrition. For Deputy Chief PNP, again, the maximum tenure in position should be four years. Same as Director of the Staff Services. For Regional Directors, the number or the maximum tenure in position should be six years, while nine years for those persons occupying the position as provincial or city directors. On the other hand, other positions higher than provincial director shall have the maximum tenure of six years unless earlier separated, retired, or promoted to a higher position in accordance with PNP staffing pattern. Police officers holding the mentioned positions shall be compulsory retired at the maximum tenure in position herein prescribed or at the age of 56, whichever is earlier. So even though you do not reach at the age of 56, as long as you um, occupy the position as chief of police, after four years maximum of tenure, you will be considered as retired, or you, will, you need to process the compulsory retirement. Next is attrition by relief. A PNP uniform personnel who have been relieved for just cause and has not been given an assignment within two years after such relief shall be retired or separated. The person or the officer who is in charge to relieve a particular officer from a particular position are those are the ones who occupied supervisory positions. So if the person has been relieved and within two years he was not given an assignment, he shall be considered as separated or retired. The third one is attrition by demotion in position or rank. As I have said a while ago, when we say demotion, um, there is a reduction from a higher rank to the lower rank. Let us say, for example, from police corporal, you, the person has been demoted to patrolman or patrolwoman. So meaning the person goes lower or goes go back to a lower rank. Any PNP personnel, civilian or uniform, who is relieved and assigned to a position lower than what is established for his or her grade in a PNP staffing pattern and who shall not be assigned to a position commensurate to his or her grade within 18 months after such demotion in position shall be retired or separated. The fourth one is attrition by non-promotion. Any PNP personnel who have not been promoted for a continuous period of 10 years shall be retired or separated. So this is one of the provisions as stated at the Republic of 8551 that a particular police officer must be promoted within 10 years. Because once there is no promotion being done for 10 years, what will happen is that he will be advised to be, to be retired or be separated from the service. The last one is attrition by other means. Any PNP member or officer with at least five years of accumulated active service shall be separated based on any of the following factors. One is inefficiency based on poor performance, 
during the last two successive annual rating periods. Every year, there is always police evaluation. If in case, a particular police officer has been found out that in two successive annual rating periods, he has been rated as insufficient or is having poor performance, that person will be considered as separated from the service. Second one is inefficiency based on poor performance for three cumulative annual rating periods. So meaning once a person has already three cumulative annual rating periods, having poor performance evaluation, that person shall be considered as separated. Or the last one is attrition because of physical or mental incapacity. So those are uh, the basis for a person to be considered as removed or considered as separated from the Philippine National Police. Usually, the quota in the Philippine National Police are arranged into two. First is um, police quota based on attrition and the second one is regular quota. If the quota is um, police quota by attrition, that means the number of quota will have to depend on the number of employees being removed from the office. Let us say, if there are 100 police officers being removed from the service, that means there will be 100 quota. The regular quota, on the other hand, is much higher. The national quota is much higher in number compared to the quota based on attrition. So those are the topics under episode 3. We discuss about the powers and functions of the Philippine National Police, as well as the rank, police promotion, police retirement, and police attrition. If you have questions with regards to the discussion in this episode, there is a comment section below. All you have to do is to write and post your questions, and I will answer your questions in that comment section. Thank you so much for watching.